All right, all right, all right. There it is. You know that music means it's go time on our podcast called Good News for Those Who Struggle. I'm your host, Casey, one of the pastors at the Avenue Church, and I am excited and delighted to be joined by my good friend, uh, just a fire starter brother of mine who kindles my spirit. His name is Andrew Holmes. Andrew, would you uh, just give us a, an introduction of uh, who you are and kind of how we've connected? Dude, I am so incredibly happy to be here with you. A um, little bit about me. My name is Andrew Holmes. I work for Four Kids, yeah, which is a foster care ministry. Come on. But I guess maybe the bigger piece of my heart and life is I'm a worshiper. Mm. I play the guitar, mm-hmm. I sing, mm-hmm. my wife plays the keys, yeah. and we minister at our local body and also throughout South Florida, and we record music, and we just kind of go after the Father's heart. Yeah. So I'm so excited to share that with, with our listeners today. That's so good, man. That is so good. And uh, yeah, let's give it up. We got some total <laughs> love for this guy. I was like, where is the studio audience? Yeah, oh, there yeah. it is. That's great. I have a feeling this guy is going to be a fan favorite. I know that. <laughs> um, one of the things that's true about Andrew is when I meet with Andrew, and um, because I know that I believe uh, one of your roles at Four Kids is church liaison coordinator. Yeah, is that, is that fair? Like the official title for my boss. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah, is the church engagement director. Love it. So yeah, that's. So when I so all I know is that when I sit down with Andrew, I'm better. And like more on fire because of it. Oh, come on. Bro. So I, you know, you can add to your title fire starter because <laughs> I feel like that's what you do for me. And when come you walk up. in a room, it just, it gets better, bro. Man, yeah. I, I didn't come here for all that. Well, man. I'm just I'm getting so, started. What are you I'm talking about? I'm so like encouraged. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, um, there is, uh, I'm so, so happy to be talking to you about two topics today. So listener, this is, this is where we're going to go. We're going to start with worship. Uh, because Andrew has experience there, and Andrew um, does some beautiful work there. I think I have, uh, is it a single or like a CD type that yeah, you gave we, me? Yeah, we what released was that? an EP, uh, I think in 2019 it was, uh, my wife and I, so I think that's what you have. Okay, yeah. okay. So beautiful, beautiful music, um, has led worship and has experience in that. So the, our first topic is going to be worship, and then our second topic is going to be foster care. And we're actually going to believe God to, uh, to, to bring the two together. Amen. Um, so let's, let's, let's go ahead and get started. And so um, basically what we've been doing with this podcast is connecting it to Sunday's message and just being able to do a little bit more of a deep dive. Sure. So we're in a series called Worship, Every Moment Matters. And you and I have had discussion about worship. As a matter of fact, you were responsible for how I closed the first message on how worship breaks down walls and like the woman at the well and like just how it just, there's just a power to worship. There's like a unseen thing that God does. Can we just start? like there and talk to me a little bit about yes, that. Yes, like I'm like, I know you guys can't see me, but I'm like jumping out of the we chair. Can. Right we can. Well, you're going to be on YouTube, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah. Man, Absolutely. Hidden camera. Yeah. Um, but just to start there, the woman at the well, I mean, for me, John 4, 24, worshiping mm-hmm. in spirit and in truth, mm-hmm. the authenticity that you can allow yourself to bring to God is so humongous. Mm. There is a desire, I think in our deepest core, Mm -hmm. we have a desire to give somebody, all of us, Mm -hmm. you know, you look at those fundamental um, societal structures like marriage and deep friendships and, and with God, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It fundamentally like worshiping in spirit and in truth is, is simply a call to authenticity, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bring who you are to the table and watch how God meets that. And I love how that story unfolds where, you know, if you're just a, a normal person, like examining what happened in John four, right? right? And Jesus calling the woman out because she had five husbands, and she's lo- the one she's with now isn't her yeah. husband. It's like he's really dissing this girl, yeah. you know. But it's not. It was love. He was being authentic. Right. He was saying, "You don't have to hide that from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I already know what's going on." Mm-hmm. And in John, in in this gospel, she literally is the first one to receive the public announcement of Jesus as the Messiah. Yeah. So I conclude in that, in worship, because that's what this is all built around. Right? Right. Where do we worship? How do we worship? Yeah. Is it here? Is it there? Not only was she a Samaritan, which we know at the time they were not the highest esteemed group. They were the half-breeds, if you will. Right. I have permission to say that because I am. <laughs> um, but they they weren't the ones that were looked to as being able to 
worship like the, the, the most accepted group in culture, but Jesus, in his loving kindness, shares with her this secret mm. that anywhere you can worship if you do it in authenticity. Mm-hmm. And so much so that I will reveal to you yeah. that I am the Messiah, the one the world's been waiting for. Wow. And in John's gospel, she's the first one mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And so then what happens? What's the result of like that moment where she actually comes and at, at, at least in a form has a, a form of worship and yeah. spirit and truth. What's the totally. result? So the way that I see it, the way that I read it in the mm-hmm. word is like she catches such a fire. Yeah. She burns so deeply. Number one, she falls completely in love yeah. with this man who I didn't even talk about the time of day. She, her being there at the time of, of day that she was, mm-hmm. was an, an immediate indicator that she wasn't in the upper echelon of society. Right. Normally in the morning when it's cool, you go to the well and you, you, you get the water. But because she was there in, in, the, in the hot part of the day, mm-hmm. it was already, she was shunned. So again, Again, to to talk about struggling, talk about knowing who you are, talk about Jesus Mm -hmm. really meeting us where we're at. For her to have that experience with Jesus was huge. So no, it wasn't any wonder that she caught this fire Mm -hmm. so much so that what Jesus shared with her, she literally ran into the whole town, told everybody that was willing to listen, Mm -hmm. this man told me everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? And shut me up if I'm talking too much. No, this is what I want. This is why you're here. (laughs) Can you imagine meeting somebody, having an exchange with them Mm -hmm. that's so powerful that the only reasonable response is to go and tell everyone Mm -hmm. that you know that this man knows everything about me. You must meet him. He is the Messiah. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine no. that, dude? No, it's it's like mind blowing to think about that. Yeah. Uh, And then, and then, you know, so from that point, it's like, we talked uh, earlier about walls coming down. Yeah. What kind of walls do you see come down in that particular narrative when when she gets a glimpse of who that. Jesus is? Well, you know, I call it like the destruction of all isms. Yeah. Racism, any ism you want to use mm-hmm. that separates people right. and the unity that they can and should have right. in the body of Christ that immediately levels the playing field. Well, she's a woman. Doesn't matter. It's yeah. Jesus. Well, she's not a true Jew. Doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. Jesus. Well, she's of a different race, a different. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. And our unity is, in this sense, I believe, mm-hmm. our worship to Him. Mm-hmm. And the power, I mean, I think of as you say that, I think of. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, marching around the walls of Jericho, right? right? And and mm-hmm. one of the last things that they did was the blast of the trumpet, sure, sure. right? And then upon that, and this this sound that's released from this people, this this physical structure of a wall yeah. comes burying down to the ground right. in an instant, right? Because of what I like to view as worship, mm-hmm. and then also you look at that Paul and Silas. I know that story is nuts. They were in trouble, bro. Locked up. Come on, man, locked up. What happened? Midnight, they're singing hymns to each (laughs) other. And the, the, the piece of that scripture that I love so much is that... It says that the other prisoners were listening, right? right? They were right. listening to them sing. They weren't singing themselves. Mm-hmm. They weren't. They probably didn't know the hymns. It was probably something that that the Lord gave them spontaneously. Who right. knows what it was? Right. But because of them being there in proximity, listen, man. Mm-hmm. Because they were in proximity yeah. to worship, authentic worship, yeah. true worship, yeah. they were able to be freed, yeah. unshackled, yeah. simply because of the worship of somebody else. Wow. Come on, man. That's super powerful. I mean, just even the evangelical nature of worship to people who are around it when it's filled with spirit and truth. I mean, mean, that's what I hear you saying and just giving us biblical pictures of what can happen in the midst of worship. Um, Part of what I, what I wanted to like just think through with you and, and for our listener is, so this is good news for those who struggle. So my thought is if, if we can help paint a picture and educate people as to what's actually happening yeah. when we worship, it might help people who struggle sure. with engaging sure. in worship. Yeah. And so, you know, we have a, a diversity of, of listeners here who maybe for some it's not a struggle, but for others, man, it, it's just like whether it's like the public proclamation or I don't know the song or, I, or whatever it might yeah. be, like it's just not my personality. Man, I just want to um, sure. chop it up for a second. Yeah. Help us to understand the possibilities of what happens in worship. And listener, 
be thinking about this and how this might be motivating to you as as uh, we you know we're calling you into a higher level of engagement. Yeah, I mean the first things that come to mind in that is like the power of the words "come as you are." Mm-hmm. We all come from different backgrounds, different church experiences. We've all had different walks with the Lord, mm-hmm. different personalities. Not everybody's going to have the same level as enthusiasm mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. as contemplation mm-hmm. as others. But mm-hmm. I really just challenge even you and me, man, mm-hmm. when we enter into an atmosphere of worship, bring our best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your best looks like bowing your head and just thinking on the things of God while music is going. And other times your best is screaming, singing at the mm-hmm. top of your lungs. Right. We all had those right. in church, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just want to initially start this answer by saying that, like God mm-hmm. is so pleased and delighted when you take an action that is for him, Mm -hmm. whether you think you're doing it the right way, whether you think that the person on the front row who can harmonize is far better than you, who's tone deaf, like God doesn't care about that. Like when you bring your best to God as a good father, he receives it Mm. and gives you access to things like how Casey and I were talking about in this unseen kind of realm that we know is very real. I think the first thing uh, outside of that to establish is that it's not even necessarily related to the activities of what we think of worship as like singing and mm-hmm, playing instruments, mm-hmm. but actually just being together, you know, and mm-hmm. I'll share this scripture because it means so much to me, mm-hmm. um, out of Matthew eighteen twenty four, where two or three gather together mm-hmm. as my followers, mm-hmm. I'm there among them. Yeah. He is there among us when we come together. As followers of Christ, which we all are, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he literally is present mm. in this room, in that fourth chair right mm-hmm. across from us. Mm-hmm. God is here yeah. simply because we're choosing to put our attention on him as followers. Right. That exists yeah. Yeah. in our worship, yeah. in our gathering, yeah. literally knowing the reality of Christ being present, mm-hmm. taking a second to, like, I've heard it put, like, center down, bring mm-hmm. yourself in and, and, and know that Jesus, the person of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus is with you simply because you're gathered together as believers. Wow. That to me, yeah. and maybe I'm like a, a holy hippie, that to me <laughs> is like blows my mind that we yeah. have that access yeah. anytime. Yeah, that's huge. And and even just thinking about that, that um, idea, because, you know, I, I've... I've heard it explained. I think we run an Alpha course at, at the church, and, and Alpha uh, has explained it this way. So, like, God is always present, mm-hmm. right? Like, he, it's it's part of, it's one of his attributes is he's, mm-hmm. he has omnipresence. But just like um, the three of us are present, we're here with Frankie as well, um, in this, uh, hey, what's up, Frankie? <laughs> Worship leader of AC. Come on, give, give yourself a little applause. He wouldn't love. give himself applause. Come on, there, there it is. is. There, there it is. is. All right, well done, well done. <laughs> Um, so I got Frankie here, I got Andrew here, and myself here. So we're all together, but Frankie becomes present in a different way when I call upon him, mm. and I and I call him out, so to speak. And and I think it's fair to say, as I learn more about this myself, like when we worship and we have that two or three promise that that where two or three are gathered, there he is. That he he's always present, but he becomes present in a special and Absolutely. unique, like called out Absolutely. way. Is that fair? Totally fair. I did a, a um, almost like a course on like worship, mm-hmm. and it was really very minimally about the music part of worship, mm-hmm. and it, it really drilled in on that. Mm-hmm. And you can even feel, you as a worship leader too, can even feel the difference in songs that talk about God yeah. to songs that talk to Come God. Come on, bro, with that. Come on, like, 100%. like, 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 um, the song, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. It's your breath. Yeah. In our lungs. Yeah. There's some, I mean, it's almost so good that it's overplayed in Christendom, right? Because right? right, right. you can hear that at every church you right. go to, it, all across denominations. But I think the power in that is exactly what you're saying. Mm. It goes It goes from being, let me talk about Frankie, he's a good guy, he's mm-hmm. great in worship, you know, his dad shreds a guitar, mm-hmm. to like being like, man, you are incredible. The way that you usher us into the presence of God, it, 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 it invokes a different feeling. Yeah. We're made in God's image. Yeah. Why is he any different? Yeah, right. Why is that any different for him? It's almost like I believe he comes closer mm-hmm. when we direct our conversation and attention to him. So I think that's something that happens 
in the unseen realm for sure, especially when we address God and give him our best authentically. Mm-hmm. He comes closer. Yeah. He he exists in a more real way to us that's tangible, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And so, you know, when when we begin to understand proximity to God and what that means, I mean, think about like somebody that you grew up you know, idolizing, sports hero, movie star, whatever. And you think about how cool it would be to, to have proximity with that person. That, that's one thing. I think that same idea is just amplified with the fact that we get to have that proximity in a special and unique way mm-hmm. when we gather together and sure. enter into that corporate worship. Yeah. Never mind the fact that it says where the spirit of the Lord is, Don't there do it. is... Come on, liberty, come freedom, on. all the synonyms, all right? of these, yes. So, I mean, as we talk about good news for those who struggle, mm. and we, we just spent weeks on struggling with depression, struggling with anxiety, addiction, mm. things that are those walls that, you know, you we referenced in John 4, those things that can uh, at times separate us yeah. from... Man, I, I, it feels like, and I was having a conversation today with a member from our church. It just, it feels like there's moments where God wants to do a work yeah. in worship that, um, like, listener, we want to invite you. I'm inviting myself and, 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 and everybody. We don't want to miss that. Yeah. We have that opportunity. So, really preparing yourself for worship and then leaning into that moment with mm-hmm. the best that you have, like you said, I mm-hmm. love how you started, mm-hmm. I think is huge. And God is always worth worship or like our our theology says wh- whatever we receive from it is secondary to the fact that god is worth it yeah. first and foremost but 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 we're we're looking at well what is it that mm. happens in the unseen world what do we receive and and so we've talked about walls being broken down we've talked about the presence of god yeah man anything else that you want yeah, to mention I'd, I'd love to just kind of um press in a little bit on two of those themes um, and you'll please slap me if I talk too much or time. God, no, man. Please. That's what we want you here. Permission. Come on. Um, and I'm so glad to be here. Again. Fire started. I don't know if you guys know how awesome Andrew Casey Holmes. is. He Come is on. like the man, <laughs> oh, the man, man who's not a, you're everything. Oh man. It's just, you're very kind. I'm trying to be, um, <laughs> but there's that piece about chains being broken, uh-huh. uh, from this, from our, the story of Paul and Silas that I feel like is hugely appropriate for this season of life that we live in. And I think it's important to understand that God gave us these examples in the Bible so that we can build our faith on them Mm -hmm. and apply them, this is my belief, and apply them to our current reality. Okay. So when you have struggles, like I've I've had moments in my life where I've struggled, Mm where I just haven't been able to push through. Sometimes it's emotionally, and you know, I wake up and I'm in a funk, mm. you know, and I'm more irritable, and I don't want to be that way, and I don't know why I'm that way. Right. And I spend time trying to think about, well, did I drink too much coffee? Mm. You know, did I, right. am I hungry? And right. I'm trying to think about all these physical things that contribute to that soulish place that affects the way that I respond and act mm. and, and am with people. Even today, Mm -hmm. even today, man, I've been walking through a little bit of a hard season. I got some news that a good friend of the family passed away on Monday, Mm -hmm. and and it's so terrible and it's hard. But, like, I'm trying to examine, like, okay, why do I feel this way? And the thing that I was led to do this morning was simply put on worship music. Mm -hmm. And in that worship... I couldn't take medicine to do this. I couldn't eat something to fix this. I couldn't drink something to fix this. I just literally felt this angst that I had in me that I didn't know what to do with, like just lift off and out of me. And it was simply because I came to myself. I took my attention off of the things of this world, the things that I thought were the reasons why I was feeling this way. And I said, I may or may not be able to figure this out. But if I fix my eyes on you and I Mm. give you my worship, worship is even the posture of your heart. Yeah. If I give you my worship, then I give you permission to do the work that I can't. Wow. And that's what I think is locked into this story of Paul and Silas. Mm. When we give God our worship, God is then given permission to do the things that we can't, mm. that's grace. Yeah. yeah. So one can say worship unlocks grace. Right. right. But also, not only just for you, some of you have family members and some of you have been believing for people in your life that are bound and are struggling and seem to have cyclical patterns of things that they can't get out of. Maybe your worship is a part of their freedom, mm. like Paul and Silas's mm-hmm. was for the prisoners that they were bound with. 
to the degree of it could be your brother, your sister, your family. It, you just never know what your worship releases in the heavenlies, in the unseen realm. But also, you know very well that it could be a part of somebody who you're in proximity with breakthrough, if that makes sense. Wow, that's powerful. That is powerful. And I think sometimes we become very um, horizontal, even in our thoughts about worship, like it, whether it's song choice or uh, volume or, you know, my do my hands go up, do my hands not? Like, I feel like this is a really helpful conversation because it, it lifts our eyes to the unseen world, yeah. to the transcendent world, yeah. where that's actually where our battles lie. Come on. Correct? Absolutely. And, and so in this unseen world, there are things that are happening that um, just uh, are beyond us, but we get to participate in when we give God access, yeah. like you did today yeah. in the midst of your struggle. You just stopped and opened up your your heart for access, and yeah. God did a work. Absolutely. How cool. Absolutely. How cool. And then another thing, too, that I, that I, in just my studying this and living it and really loving specifically John 4, mm-hmm. the woman at the well, that story, is the revealing of the Messiah, right? I believe in worship. There's, there's access. There's another level. There's a depth of understanding Messiah to you personally that's available. What do I mean by that? Yeah. Um, I can say something to you, Casey, and based upon my inflection, it can mean different things. Mm-hmm. Like, Casey, great message on Sunday, man, awesome. Mm-hmm. Or I can be like, Casey, great message on Sunday, awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They mean two totally different things. Mm-hmm. That inflection is in some ways a deeper form of communication Mm -hmm. that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. I believe even in our prayers, even in the ways that we commune with God, worship is is a type of inflection that's like adoration. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Not like you don't get it, but sometimes I talk and I want to, I don't know if I'm making sense. (laughs) You are. Thank you. I'm tracking. Thank you. Um, It's a type of inflection. And I believe like, you know how like, He's the sound of many waters. Well, we all know what a waterfall sounds like. So what does many waters mean? There are multiple facets of God that when we do something, there are many layers available to us and for us. So back to the Messiah, Mm -hmm. uh, the revealing of the Messiah. I believe that at our personal levels, the areas where we need to see, we all know, obviously, eternal salvation and this walk with God and being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and and, and being put into the kingdom of His marvelous life. But every day, you have need of that manifestation, yes. of the Messiah, yes. of Jesus Christ, to save you from something every single day. So good. And I believe worship cuts through all the noise and brings you like Amazon Prime delivery, delivery, the thing that God needs to be Messiah for you in on this wow. day, the thing that God needs to be Savior for you yes. in on this given day. Yes. I believe when we worship, if I'm looking at John 4, 24, mm-hmm. in that passage, right, mm-hmm. there is access to knowing Jesus at a deeper level as Messiah when we worship. Wow. That's huge, I'm bro. sorry. That's beautiful. I had, to, I had to just let it out. I love that. I love that, and that that constant reminder of you know um, you know how the scriptures talked about we how we are saved and how we are being yes, saved, yes, and yes. so it seems like worship not only reminds us of w- the victory that that right. has occurred, but it reminds us of that ongoing, ongoing. victory. Come on, man. right? And I mean the 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 deeper re- we grow in our need for Christ, Mm -hmm. it seems like the more glorified he is in our lives and worship gives us access to that. Absolutely. So, so it gives God access to our hearts to do a work, but then it gives us access to that deeper level of Messiah. Yeah. That's so good. And I don't know where that, I was thinking about that today and, and the term inflection came and, and it just, that example really brought that to life, um, for me. So man, I, I don't know, um, I don't know how that is applicable to the listener's life mm-hmm. and and what your worship does and what you need to come from your worship to God. But uh, again, I just want to challenge you again. Like, if you've struggled with feeling even um, 
adequate to bring yourself to God in worship. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you feel like worship is something that's for somebody on stage. Or mm-hmm. like God so values your worship. Mm-hmm. He so values what you bring to him as a child. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I really just feel a pull on that from you. Next time you, even after this, maybe you turn this off and you're like, I want to worship. Mm-hmm. Throw on a YouTube video of, of worship and just mm-hmm. see what God has hidden for you. It's, it's the, in Proverbs, it talks about it's the privilege of kings to search out a matter right. that God purposefully hides treasures for us to look for. And I believe many of them are found and uncovered in worship. So. Well, just to give testimony to that as well, one of the ways that I often will prep um, for, it used to be for a, a message on Sunday, I would, I might spend time like looking over my notes yeah. or, you know, whatever, just um, just doing things that might get me more ready for the message. And I've transitioned over the last few years to getting my heart more ready. Mm. And it's just, uh, and what, it, what that means is AirPods go in yeah. and uh, worship uh, comes with it. And it's, it's like amazing um, how the Lord meets me and prepares me. Mm. And, and like, um, there's just, there's things shift in worship where they don't shift elsewhere. That's true. For me. That's so personal true. testimony, it's like, and, and things shift elsewhere at, at different times, whatever, you know, all, all I'm saying is worship creates an atmosphere for me. Yeah where I, I'm, you know, and, and maybe they're shifting and I'm just not recognizing them, but I, it's a recognizable right. shift that. that is not uncommon for me yeah. to have entered worship one way and leave it another. Yeah. I, I really love this conversation and the way that we're doing it because I feel like we're taking something that's very abstract mm-hmm. and we're pulling specifics out of it. Right. And, and that's something we need to do in, yeah. as Christians in this current culture. There are mm-hmm. certain things that are applicable to this period of time that you're not going to read specifics in the Bible about you know what to do when when uh, the driver next to you cuts you off. Right. Like, that's not going to. But right. the interpretation that God locks into the living Word is available yeah. for us to understand. And I feel like as we're doing that, we're talking about the Word specifically mm-hmm. for worship in worship. We're pulling out some specific things that are very beneficial. So number one, I'm so grateful for this because mm-hmm. it, it it's definitely doing something for my mm-hmm. heart. Me too. And number two, there's a, another thing that. Uh, in our conversation, I'm reminded of, it's the affection that we have for Jesus. Okay. How worship directly correlates to that affection. Okay. I've found myself in my walk with the Lord at times feeling dry, Mm -hmm. feeling like, you know, okay, well, like, what's next? You know, like mundane. Right. And I don't want to feel that way because how can you feel that way about the Savior of the world? Right, right. But, I mean, just to be real, like, that's a struggle. You know, like, sometimes, like, Am I going through the motions? Right. But as I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about the times where I've given myself in worship, to worship, sang songs, like completely shut everything else out, and just sang to myself, I had an affection yeah. increase in my heart right. for Jesus. Right. My heart became soft yeah. for him, to yeah. know him more. And it was because of yes. worship. Yes. And it that soft heart, towards Jesus bled into the way I am with my wife yeah. and my children right. and the people that God's put around me right. simply because of my affection for the one who is love. Yes. You know, so that yes. was another big piece yes. of, of worship that I've literally seen in my own life and heart. Wow. And I know that the, the scripture would back that up because in second Corinthians, Paul writes about, um, and how by beholding him, mm. we are transformed into his image from one so degree good, of glory man. from another. And so worship is beholding him. It's an increase of affection. And and then and then you see transformation yeah, from that. That's, that's so good. I love that. I love that. And man, listen, I, I just want to say that it's one thing to follow Jesus um, you know, out of obedience and out of like, you know, a dry place. That's special and the Lord loves that. Like Andrew's yeah. been saying, like he loves what you bring to him. Um but it's also something special to be able to follow Jesus out of obedience while you are um, experiencing your affections being stirred yeah. for him yeah. and growing and in increasing uh, for him. And so worship is just a, um, a radically helpful uh, bridge yeah. to that increase. And when you have both an allegiant and affectionate follower of Jesus, 
Watch out. You're going you're gonna to get a, Sam- a Samaritan woman. Yeah, whole like, city's going to be changed. Yeah, yeah. We no longer believe because of what you said. We now have come to believe for ourselves. ourselves. Right? <laughs> so good. And like the walls, the walls break down. Yeah. So listen, worship, like, I, and I know you know this, our, our series title is Worship Every Moment Matters. And so we've been talking a lot about worship as it pertains to like song and our um, our coming before the Lord because he is worthy and, and what happens in that moment. But talk to me a little bit. I'm going to shift on you here and mm-hmm. talk to me a little bit about f- how you would see, if you do see, yeah. something like foster care as a form of worship. I, I mean, yes, <laughs> the short of it. Yeah, I think so, totally. And it's funny because this conversation is literally the merging of my worlds, yeah. you know? Um, and, you know, we look as people who share the message of foster care and we liken it to orphan care and mm-hmm. what the Bible talks about orphans. It's very, very clear the heart of God mm-hmm. um, that him as a father is, that he has right. for children who come from situations that are of no fault of their own. And a little bit about my experience, too. I actually used to be the guy that would remove the children from their biological families and put them into foster care. So I got to see firsthand the dynamics of the family, what was happening with the child, what was going on as I put them into foster care. Mm. So I say that to say this. When we read the scriptures that talk about, you know, the least of these... Mm -hmm. And one in particular I want to read out of Mark. Mm -hmm. Uh, This was when the disciples kind of were arguing about who's the greatest, you know, like, is it me? And um, Jesus so masterfully answered them with this example. And I'm reading out of 9, verse 36 and 37. And it says, and he took a child, put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Mm. And whoever receives me receives not just me, but him who sent me. Mm. And I was pondering on that and praying through that. And I literally just kind of had in my mind this image of like these children that have gone through trauma Mm -hmm. and are in foster care. When they are received by someone in the name of Jesus... The scripture says it's literally like you are receiving me wow. into your care. Wow. There's another scripture that talks about like even if you've given a cup of cool water, mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. done it to me. Mm-hmm. It's the same here with these children. You literally, as you take in a child out of a hard situation, a traumatic situation in foster care, and their whole world's upside down, and you bring them in, in the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. in the love of Jesus, in the care of Jesus, mm-hmm. that child to you as a foster parent literally becomes an avenue to minister to Jesus himself. Oh my goodness. Dude, that's powerful. When I read it like that, yeah. and the Lord, I believe the Lord showed me that, yeah. it totally changed, like, why wouldn't I, yeah. you know, be a part of this? Right. Uh, and listen, I know that everybody has their place and what, they, mm-hmm. what they're called to do. And it's, it's not everybody is called to be a foster family that takes in eight kids. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. But there's something about this space yeah. that God is on and God is in. Mm-hmm. And there's a reward, a blessing, uh, mm-hmm. the blessing of knowing him in a new way through this avenue yeah. of fostering. So I believe it is worship in the sense of, if I'm looking at Mark 9, right, literally I get the opportunity to serve this child in the name of Jesus as Jesus. Yeah. That's the blessing in right. it. Right, right. Wow. It could be a way to know him more. Yeah. He may teach you lessons about his heart. Yes. That you will only learn through caring for this one who has come out of a place of trauma. Mm. That's what his word says. Mm. So that's what I think. So, man, if, if worship... Um, is ascribing worth to someone or, or somebody. I mean, let's, let's use that as a f- brief functional definition. What a better way to ascribe worth to Jesus than having him in your home, feeding him, bathing him, caring for him, like providing a shelter. Come on, man. Like, like as, as 
unto the Lord. Yeah. I mean, talk about ascribing worth, like as you're loving and caring for that child, although your world may be turned upside down. Yeah. What a beautiful form of worship. Come on. That we, I mean, how is it different than like the world get, that gets turned up down, upside down in, in the book of Revelation when people are like falling on their face right. and casting crowns yeah. at the feet of Jesus, yeah. right? This is me like taking my kid to the park, being willing to stop my quote unquote normal predictable life yeah. in order to, to give this care yeah. to the Lord through this child. I mean, I, I have to believe he receives that. I got goosebumps. Yeah. I mean, I have to believe it too. And yeah. though we'll never find a scripture that says foster care is worship, right. definitely, period. Right. right. Right? That's why we have Holy Spirit yeah. residing in us, yeah. right? He, Jesus left so that he could come. Yes. And and I, man, I truly, truly, truly believe that this is something that God wants us to resolve as the church. Mm -hmm. He wants us to to be the ones that care for all of the children mm -hmm. that come into what we would call the orphan care mm -hmm. in America. It's foster care. Mm -hmm. Like he, I believe he wants to see his church, the beautiful bride of Christ, mm -hmm. be the ones that, that say, no, not on my watch. Right. You know, I look at this generation and I see how prone we are to social justice mm -hmm. And really, I mean, I've heard stories of people giving it all, mm -hmm. fancy careers, high paying jobs to go march and do things in the name of justice. Right. And I know that God has put in this generation a heart to change the world. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a shift of our affection back to Jesus as a mm -hmm. generation, mm -hmm. I believe doing things like taking in and discipling mm -hmm. one of the least of these mm -hmm. in our home mm -hmm is exactly 100% what God is asking us to do. And I mean generation by everyone who has a beating heart on the earth uh -huh, right now, uh -huh. not just baby boomers, Z, X, Y, you know, right. all the above. I think that that is, that's what he's asking us to do very yeah. plainly. Yeah. Show the love of Jesus very practically by doing things like caring for the orphan. Wow. It's, again, it's my opinion. It's what I feel like the Lord's sharing with me. It's why I do what I do. Man, and I feel like uh, just as far as like a biblical anchor, I, you know, I think of Romans 12. Mm. that talks about our true worship being like a, a living sacrifice. Yeah. And, and I, I just have found that to be um, the place where I have experienced the greatest living sacrifice yeah. uh, when we opened our home uh, to wow. children. And... Um, so when I have a mindset that this is not only for Jesus, but actually unto Jesus, almost like the difference between a song that sings about Jesus yeah. and a song that sings to Jesus, yeah. um, you know, I, I just, I think mind shifts and, and having a right theology about yeah. like the unseen world of what's happening when somebody fosters or yeah. adopts is, is really important. Um, so, so Andrew, give us a little bit of like, hey, like what's the landscape right now of, of what's going on in, in the foster care world? Absolutely. Um, so it, in, in Palm Beach, currently we have, as of this month, there's an average of 55 removals. So that's mm -hmm. 55 kids coming, f leaving their biological homes due to abuse, neglect, and abandonment and finding themselves in foster and care. And that's in the midst of COVID. In so that number would probably be higher. Correct. If like more were reporting and things like that. Correct. Is, okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. That's very accurate. Okay. Um, and we, as four kids, as a, as a Christian foster care organization, we we currently are need are in need of ten homes okay. in Palm Beach to do our part in the community that we serve in Palm Beach. Okay. Currently, we are having to say no because of the shortage of ten homes mm. that we have. And it gets a little complicated with what goes into that home. But the simplest way to put it is out of those 10 homes, we need four homes that are willing to take siblings mm -hmm. and six homes that are willing to take, you know, regular placements. Right. Um, if we were to have those 10 homes, then we as, as four kids could do our part in the community to serve those who we are appropriately able to serve. Mm. But because we are 10 homes short, mm -hmm. we aren't able to reach to the capacity that we can. Yeah. So um, this isn't just like a um, like an artificial need or a, a a good thought, but like it's not really a crisis. I mean, 
55 kids and the fact that like you're 10 homes short right yeah. now if you will is that so what does that mean for those those kids it, like where are they going because sure. they're not they're not here out of those uh well out of those 55 you know some go to family members mm -hmm. um temporarily uh some some biological parents get it together really quick mm -hmm. and they go back to their parents um uh, others go into foster care, mm -hmm. and out of those that go into foster care, there's different levels of need. Some okay. are medically fragile, some need more of like a specialized support. But those 10 homes are those homes that four kids can definitely meet. So for uh, by us not having th those homes, it just simply means that uh, out, of, out of the six and four, the sibling group and the single kids, they are either going to be placed with another organization mm -hmm. uh, that we can't really guarantee. Mm -hmm. They're going to be given the gospel. They're going to be loved like Jesus. Right. Um, and there's that's nothing against any other organization. Yeah. It's just simply the reason why we exist is Jesus. Yeah. And we believe that every child should have a home and experience the love of Jesus. Right. But by not having those homes, they can go elsewhere. Mm. Um, or some even remain in, in foster care, which mm -hmm. is not an ideal situation because... Foster care wasn't designed to be an orphanage, so to speak. Mm. So that's kind of what's what's up if if we don't find those homes. And it's not like a a desperate ask, so to speak. It's just the reality yeah. of the situation, and that's why we do what we do. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I know there's there's a lot of first steps that people can take that are really helpful, and even in, in our journey, which you know we fostered. And then adopted. Uh, the first thing that we did, or at least early, was we we provided respite care yeah. for a family, which is we would be willing to take children that were already in foster care for like the weekend or a couple of days to give that family a break. They might need to whatever, um, and then and then they would go back with that family. But it it brought us into proximity with yeah. these children that were in need, and it was like a first step. And um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of first steps out there right now. Like you got Care Portal. Yeah. You have we're going to be having our our for, we're back after we took a break for COVID. Foster Parent Night Out this Friday night at wow. the Avenue Church. Come so on, like man. volunteer for that and spend three hours with foster care kids so that mom and dad can can have a date night or whatever. Um, there is there's respite. Like I said. Uh, there's prayer where you can just pray for, for people who are in foster care. There's a wraparound team where, you know, yeah. you can come around a current foster family and just say, hey, we'll be responsible for meals on Thursday night. or whatever. So a ton of first steps. So listeners, if you're out there, you know, and you're like, man, this is kind of new to me, and, um, you know, like I would love to take a first step, there's a ton out there. And mm -hmm. can you give us your website? Yeah, that's um, 4kids.us. So that's the number four, mm -hmm. and spell out the word kids.us. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're specifically interested in fostering, you could just put forward slash foster, mm -hmm. or you could text foster to 474747. Um, and then you, the website's real easy to navigate if you're interested in some of those other first steps, like what Casey was talking about, serving a foster family. That's called FAM. Just peruse the website for FAM, F-A-M, or just find other ways, too, to plug in because there's a lot of uh, tools to explore on there to really express um, what God may be calling you to do in the space mm -hmm. of foster care. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and that's awesome, and that, that was how we started our journey. But now I want to speak specifically to it won't be all of our listeners, but to I'm just going to ask the Lord to uh, at least be five, six listeners out there right yeah. now. You love the idea of foster care. You believe in it biblically, um, but you're struggling. And reminder, this is a podcast uh, called Good News for Those Who Struggle. You're struggling with the reality of opening your home hmm. and what that might mean to your current family dynamic, that what that might mean to you, your finances, whatever the case may be. Can we, can we just speak a word um, to those families that are maybe on the brink of it's a great idea, but I've been struggling with actually taking that next step? Yeah. Can I get real transparent? Come on. That's, that's what we do at the AC. <laughs> Um, so this is the space that I work in. Uh -huh. It's my job. Right. I was a part of taking kids out of foster care. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've always, me and my wife, we've always wanted to foster mm -hmm. because we're currently not foster parents. Mm -hmm. She's worked in foster care for 10 years at least. Um, but we always were like, you know, we want to have our kids. We want to get set up. Mm -hmm. We want to have a certain size house. We want to have, um, <laughs> so good, Lord. 
we want to have a um, certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. And those things, to the degree that we wanted them, they they just never, they've never come. Mm-hmm. Although we got a brand new house, we've got an extra bedroom. Like now that I'm processing out loud, like we have everything that we need. Right. And for the things that we don't, God will provide. Yeah. He's never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Yeah. That's scriptural. Yeah. He'll provide. Right. And I, I was praying today. Um, I said, God, if um, if it's time for us to move forward with this, would you just give me a confirmation, mm-hmm. Lord? And here you are mm-hmm. asking me this question mm-hmm. um, in this way. I wasn't yeah. expecting the question in this yeah. way. Uh, and this is the third time today that wow. this has come up. And it's not normal for me. And I haven't wanted to do it because I've, I'm have working in this space. I yes. don't want to do it for work. I want to do it because he's yeah. leading me. Yeah. And I guess... Take it from me, who has waited and now has been prompted by the Lord three times a day to do wow. it. Everything is not going to be right. Everything is not going to be where you want it to be or where you think you need it to be. Life on this earth, as the Bible says, is but a vapor. Mm. We have a certain amount of days that we're given to fulfill the will of God and bring his kingdom more to this earth. Mm-hmm. And if you have a racing heart right now or if you mm. feel a burden and it's good and you feel a burning inside don't resist that Mm. lean into that take a chance Mm -hmm. um and go through the classes Mm. because your greatest experience of god could be through caring for the life of a little one yeah um so that would be my encouragement as it's even an encouragement to me today as i prayed i said lord please show me and here you are (laughs) asking me these specific questions Mm -hmm. um and know that um I've heard it put this way before, but if you take a risk or even a chance on doing something for the Lord, mm. if it doesn't work out the way you thought, it counts for something yes. big. And I challenge you guys to do that, those specific oh, ones who wow. feel that in your heart. Even if it's not the perfect thing for you to do, man, it's going to mean a lot to God. Yeah, That would be my, my encouragement. Wow. I love that because that's actually where we started with worship and just just bring your heart, your best to God in that current moment, and that will be enough. It'll be rewarded. It'll be met. It'll like it'll touch God's heart. Mm. And as I hear you talk about, like not the perfect situation, not the not not everything in, in in order the way that you wanted it to, and who knows where it goes. But the fact that you're willing to surrender that and open that door. Um, and God's going to meet you there and really bless. And his heart is going to be blessed um, just by your willingness um, to walk down that path. Amen. And, um, and so as a, uh, a foster uh, family who, who then adopted, we just celebrated Adoption Day, bro. Come on, on my man. daughter's fifth birthday. Come They're on. both five right now. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so she, we adopted them both on her birthday. And, um, you know, it's, I, I think it's... Um, it's definitely the hardest thing my wife and I have ever done mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. We've, we've been married almost 25 years coming up. You know, we've got a 19-year-old and a 15-year-old. And people will say, like in jest, um, like you were almost out. Like it was, it was almost like time for you to shine now as like an adult mm-hmm. and, and get your comfort on. And, um, and I think what God showed me was, um, man, like I wanted you to lean in Mm. and I had a lot more for you and for your family and for your current biological kids to see like the gospel with, with flesh and to experience what healing can look like, um, in your home. So if you're down for any of that listener, um, foster care might very well be your next step and i would highly recommend checking out uh, four kids in south florida to get licensed through and to be supported by as we are continued to be supported by you guys Mm. so man it has been um a pleasure talking with you andrew and i don't think we were just talking i feel that i feel like this was a form of worship yeah lord and i feel like he's well pleased in it and met us and met our listeners here um and uh man Again, I'm leaving better because Come I got on, to man. spend time with you 
um, and I and I know it's Jesus in you, and I know you refer, you know, back to me as Jesus in in <laughs> me, and and that's I think why our spirits like are are so excitable yeah. together because yeah. it's like when you get around another person where you know like Jesus lives in that person, yeah. it's like oh fire yeah. man fire. <laughs> so let me pray. Yeah, I just want to pray for those Please that specific do. demographic of yeah. listeners that we were just talking to. So far, no no. Andrew, I want you to pray. Yeah, I man. want you to pray. I was going to ask Come you, on. but I'm so glad you bring that. I didn't even Go. have to. Go. God, we pray for uh, everyone who's been listening, but yes. specifically also those, Lord, who are dealing with that heart right now that's yes, racing. God. Yes. And they know, God, that there's another level of experiencing mm-hmm. you that belongs to them. Mm-hmm. Father, I just ask that you would come alongside of them right mm-hmm. now in yes. this very yes. moment. Yes, Father. Even as they're listening, even as everyone is listening, yes. may they encounter you as yes. this form of worship is currently taking place. Yes, God. Yes. God, I ask that you would meet them. Yes. You would confirm. They may not have all the, the I's dotted and the T's mm-hmm. crossed, but their heart has a resounding yes. God. Yes. yes, God. This is for me. This is my mark that the Holy Spirit is having me leave on the earth. This is my expression of Jesus. This is the gospel that I can live. This is the living epistle that I can be read of all that. Would you move in those hearts today, God? And would you even bless those for taking the time Mm -hmm. to listen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, I'm asking you to increase in their life. May their affection grow for you. May their their worship intimately, even at their home, grow for you. May may people who listen to this today be set on fire for the living God. Because that's what you have for us, your children exponentially more than we can even imagine or think. And I pray that and bless your people today with that because you're good. So we love you, Lord. We give you Mm -hmm. our time, every minute, every Mm -hmm. word, a seed planted Mm -hmm. deep into these hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, thanks for joining us um, on our podcast here today. Uh, Frankie, thank you. Andrew, thank you. I love you both. You are dear friends to me. And I, like I said, I am uh, better for the presence of both of you. And Mm -hmm. listener, I'm believing that's true of you today as well. So joining us next next week. Uh, Have a great week and love you all.